Good evening, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with tonight's coronavirus update. For those of you who are new to the video, um, I try to every night give everyone a little bit of an update on what's going on with the coronavirus, the latest numbers, what try to delve into a little bit of the information and try to do some fact checking and give people some reasonable information. Why am I qualified to do this? Well, I don't know if I'm qualified to do it, but I do have some background that's probably applicable. I'm an emergency medicine uh, physician. I'm board certified in emergency medicine as well as obesity medicine. So I work in the emergency department still and I see these cases for real in, in real life. I also own and run Vitality Medical Wellness Institute, which is a clinic that focuses on, on human performance. We do weight loss and hormone therapy, executive health. We work with athletes, and we do a lot of very cutting-edge functional medicine in my clinic. But that means I'm a small business owner, so I'm very innately aware of the challenges that this virus has, has given to small business owners and employees and employers and everything else. So that's a little bit about me. We usually start the video with the numbers, and the numbers today are worldwide 3.5 million cases, 248,000 deaths, 1.1 million people have recovered. Here in the U.S., there's 1.2 million cases, 69,000 deaths, 159,000 people have recovered. In my little neck of the woods in North Carolina, 12,000 cases, 430 deaths. You know, those numbers um, started out very, very low, and they've progressively gotten more and more as we've gone along. And now we're at this crux of time where we're starting to talk about relaxing restrictions. We're all sick of being locked up. People want to get their hair cut, myself included. They want to go out and do the things that they, they did before. They want to gather. They want to go to restaurants and, and bars. They want to get together with their friends. And so we're starting to, to enter this first phase of relaxing restrictions. And there are about 13 states right now that are proposing, I think, in the next week or so to do so. A lot of those states are doing kind of what was is expected. They're relaxing those restrictions after two weeks of declining numbers of cases. There are a couple states, Texas included, that those numbers are going up in the relaxing restrictions. And so I think that we're going to find out fairly quickly whether this is a good idea or a bad idea. I have been saying for a while now that we need to give people a pathway to get back to their livelihood, but we want to do it in a way that protects the most vulnerable while opening up the restrictions for as many people as we can. Three weeks from now, we're gonna film a video and we're gonna be able to look back and say, okay, restrictions were relaxed on this date and this is the result. And either we're gonna see a big spike in cases or hopefully we won't. I have to say the CDC has, I guess, an internal report that their modeling shows that we're gonna have steady increases in cases and increases in deaths um, going on throughout the month of May. And by June 1st, we might be seeing as many as 200,000 cases and 3,000 deaths daily from the virus. Right now, we're about 25,000 cases new every day and about 16, 1,700 deaths. So if that's the case, and, and those models apparently do take into this relaxing of restrictions. So we're going to have to look at that. I, I've been bombarded with a lot of, you know, since I started this, I get lots of questions every day, emailed me to me, sent to me on Facebook, on YouTube, elsewhere, and I do my best to, to answer as many as I can. I've been getting an increasing number of conspiracy theories sent to me, and I, you know, I don't, I don't want to honor these things with a lot of discussion. I try to debunk the obvious ones, but in the last couple of days, I've had several people basically ask me a simple question. Is COVID-19 real? Meaning that is this all a conspiracy? Is it all is it all fake? Is or, you know what's going on? And I understand you know we're we're locked away, we're frustrated, we have nothing to do but cruise the internet, and you know you start going down these rabbit holes, and, and some of these people you know the, it's glitzy performances and it seems really real, but I think that you know I don't feel that way because I've actually seen these patients, I've seen people die from this virus. My family, we have a family friend whose sister-in-law died of it and her whole family was infected. So we personally know that it's real, but how do I convince somebody who's asked me that question? I don't know, like I don't, you know, I can't take you to the emergency department with me and, and make you down up in all kinds of PPE and, and take you around, they're not gonna allow that. But I did have a, a, a viewer, his name is Chad, who sent me some information from the CDC and asked some questions about it. And as I was looking at that, I started cruising around this, this link that he sent me, 
And I found that the CDC reports actually excess deaths. And what does that mean? It means that the CDC tracks deaths throughout the U.S. and they've got a running idea of what those deaths are. And if you look back three, four years, you can see that the, the number of deaths, there's little ups and downs in the wintertime, it goes up, it goes down in the spring, but they're pretty consistent. And then, then they've, they've basically generated this line of, okay, if you know X percentage above those kind of typical numbers, we're gonna cause call excess. And there's a red line in that graph, and I'll put a link in it um, underneath on the YouTube channel. And you can see this red line, and that number, it, that red line represents excess deaths. And the vast majority of time, going back to 2017, actual deaths never exceed that. There's one time between 2017 and 2018, which was a particularly bad flu, um, flu season, that there was a little bit of blip for a couple months at the flu season um, of excess of deaths. But other than that, it's always been below it. However, starting in March, those numbers are way, way up. And if you look at their data from January 1st that they calculate so far, there's been 66,000 excess deaths, meaning more deaths than would be expected since June 1st. So something has killed nearly 70,000 Americans since January 1st. And if COVID's not real, then what is it? What is it that's that's killed nearly 70,000 Americans. And I think that that's some really basic information that you really can't explain away. It's real information. It's not saying who's diagnosed with COVID, who wasn't, even though you can go in there and, and break that down, you can remove all the COVID deaths. And if you do that, guess what you find? There's still about 30,000 excess deaths. What does that probably mean? It means that, as we've been saying for a long time, we are probably underrepresenting the number of COVID deaths, not overrepresenting. So that's something to, to look at. Remember, our individual risk is low. There is some, uh, some other uh, information out there that shows that you know, if you're less than, than 45 years old or so and you have no medical problems, your risk of getting COVID and dying for it is well less than 0.4% or so. Those numbers steadily go up as you add medical problems and they go up significantly when you get above 65. So for the vast majority of us, we're going to get we're going to get exposed to it. We're either not going to have symptoms at all, or we're going to have a very mild course of it, and we're going to get better. But there's a very vulnerable set of, of patients in this country, and those numbers, you know, they number in the millions who are at high risk for this. So as we open things up, we need to try to balance the good of the many in terms of getting back to work, getting the economy going, going, but also protecting the most vulnerable. And that's going to be a difficult tightrope to walk, and we're going to see how we're doing it. The more testing we get, the better data we're gonna get. The other thing I wanted to talk about was an interesting report I read about a lab discovery of a monoclonal antibody. You know, a monoclonal antibody is an antibody that's very specific for one thing, and apparently that antibody's been developed that can bind the coronavirus and deactivate it. Now, that's in vitro. What does in vitro mean? In glass, meaning it's only in a test tube. There's not been animal studies. There's not been human studies. It's, so it's a possible therapeutic, but, you know, probably many, many years away, but it's interesting, some good news there. I'm gonna cut it short today. As I always tell people, wash your hands, take care of yourselves, take care of your families, take care of those around you. If you find these updates valuable, please subscribe to our YouTube page. Hit the little bell so you'll get a notification when we update. Like our Facebook page and follow us. I'll be back nightly with these updates for as long as you'll have me. This is Dr. Jeffrey Galvin signing off for the night. Have a great evening.